Hi everyone, so I wanted to do another video about uh, harnesses. So I put Koda on the treadmill and as you can see he's doing a free walk. So that is without harnesses, without a lead, without anything pulling up against his normal walk. Now you sort of have to take this with a pinch of salt because on a treadmill it's going to be a little bit altered anyway and he tends to prefer the back of the treadmill so his walk is, is probably a little bit shorter than it would be normally. So here's the view from the front. As you can see, it's a nice steady pace walk. Nothing much to sort of um, mention here. And then we get him into a trot. So as you can see from the walk, um, the walk, perfect walk is where they sort of kick from their back leg up to their front leg so it looks like the back leg is kicking their front leg up and it moves as such. The proper trot is where you see alter, um, alternate legs moving so you've got the back right as you can see moving with the left forelimb moving so they've got diagonal limbs moving at the same time. So this is a lovely looking trot. Everything's balanced. And here it is in slow-mo. You see the right leg here moves up with the left forelimb and then the same goes for the back leg. Back left leg moves with the right forelimb. Do like a slow-mo. So we're gonna start Coder off in a very common harness I see a lot of dogs in which is the Julius Canine Harness. It literally slides over the top of the head and clips up round just behind the front legs. Um, <clears throat> these are not great for dogs at all and I will show you why. So let's get him into a walk. And off he goes. Now instantly you can see how much shorter his gait is. Even his back legs. He feels restriction as soon as he hits that um, that belt that goes underneath his belly and, and he immediately stops. So there's no full range of motion going on there with his front legs. And then obviously because he stops with his front legs, his back legs stop too. So you're getting no full range of motion from either front or rear limbs. This in turn will ruin your dog's muscle development. Let's get him up into a trot and see what we do. So immediately here you can see we're pacing. So pacing means that you're using the same legs on the same side of the body. So the right leg on the rear and the front go at the same time. So this um, creates a uneven muscle development and it's just generally bad for your dog. If your dog is doing this day in, day out because you're using this harness, your dog is gonna be seriously lacking in proper muscle development and will suffer for this going forward. So most dogs pull, so we um, added on a lead and we gave them a bit to pull against just to see if this improved things. And it has to some degree fixed the trot but it is all still very short and it's all over the place is I wouldn't have said fixed it was a word I would have wanted to use with this because obviously your dog's pulling and that's again creates its own problems so here I've moved him back down to a walk and you can see how much shorter those back legs are moving there's there's I know he puts himself to the back of the treadmill, so again, you've got to take this with a pinch of salt, but this is in general how your dogs are gonna be moving in this harness and look how much higher his back end is now to his front. If you have your dog in this harness, please switch out to something else. So this is the harness I tend to use and it wasn't until doing this video that I, um, I realized how he was walking in it. Uh, it's just a cheap 
uh, harness, uh, which I thought gave him the most amount of um, room around his, his shoulders once it was put on. So it goes over his head again and then straps up around his shoulders. But you can see how much room it gives his shoulders to move compared to the Julius K9. Plenty of room, well, what you'd think was plenty of room. But um, let's see what he moves like when he's on the treadmill. So up he goes. Let's get him into a walk. Close the gate first. And off we go, into a walk. So once we get up to speed, you can already see we're moving a lot nicer. We've got a much bigger gait where we've got a much freer range of motion here. This is a much more normal um, walk compared to the Julius K9. It's, um, it looks freer. And interesting that he feels he needs to stretch after wearing the previous harness. So let's get him up into a trot. And as you can see, we're pacing. Um, so I thought this was a good harness. Um, but as you can see, we've got the right rear and the right fore going at the same time on both sides. So this is encouraging, obviously muscle development so we want to be seeing the alternate legs on alternate sides so we want to be seeing right forelimb and the rear left forelimb going at the same time instead we've got them both going at the same side uh, so let's see what happens when he needs to or he pulls this isn't a dog that pulls normally so we're not used to this um, so obviously it's brought him right to the back of the treadmill so it's shortened up his gait on the back legs it has lengthened his uh, front legs uh, on the range of motion a little bit but it has fixed his trot and he is doing his trot nicely but still it's not um, where it should be compared to his free running we just remind you again what the walk looks like in a slow-mo. You see how the back leg on the same side sort of kicks up the front leg on the same side. But in general, you have sort of as the back leg extends, the foreleg on the opposite side extends outwards or forwards as well. So that is your walk. So onto the last harness, which is the rough wear harness. It goes over the head again, clips up over and round the shoulder and has a secondary clip a bit further back down the dog's ribs. So that's two straps. <clears throat> As you can see, the first strap has to go through one of the dog's legs. And off we go into the walk. As you can see, we've got a nice walk. Back leg is kicking up that front leg. And you've got alternate legs. So the rear right is extended as the, um, as the left fore is extended. All seems good here. So let's move him up to a trot. And into the trot, let's start nice and slow. Ramp up that speed. So you can see we've started in a pace, but he sorted himself out. So we're now into a nice proper trot there. Good, so this is the first harness that I've seen that he hasn't gone into a pace and stayed in a pace. This is a proper trot. Like his free running trot. As you can see in the slow-mo, as the rear right leg comes up, the left foreleg goes out. Same on the alternate side. 
So let's give something for Coda to pull up against. And here we go. We're into a bit of a pace here. Let's see if he fixes it. And he does. He does, yes. So it's all a bit it's all a bit fast and furious, but that that is a um, that is a proper trot still. He did start off in a pace, but we did get back to a normal trot. And this is him at a walk. Again, I'm not massively keen on him pulling on this harness because you can see how short all of this is. It's like wearing the Julius Canine harness. It's um it um. He's not doing his full range of, of movement or motion on the front legs, definitely not the back legs. So um, it would be detrimental for him to be using this harness day in and day out. Harnesses were made originally for the Huskies um, to pull sleds over long distances. The harness allows the dog to spread the weight of what it is pulling across its entire body. So it's giving him more energy to pull and to pull you harder. So certain types of harnesses will allow your dog to do that better. And other types will obviously, um, <laughs> obviously hinder that and then damage your dog in the process. That's all from us for today. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe for us and I'll see you on the next video. Bye guys.